thank you for joining us. And we are so happy to be joined by best-selling author of The Happiness Equation, Neil Pasricha, is here, is back. And you're going to show us how can we, we can break through the blues of the winter. The January yeah. grind is a real thing, and we can really get back on the gerbil wheel. So good morning to you. Welcome good back. Good morning. Good morning to you, Jill. Thanks for having me. And, and you're right. You know, everyone these days is just so, is so busy. I mean, I talk to people all the time, and it's like, you know, people are checking their cell phones 150 times a day. We actually, we actually yes. touch them over 2,000 times a day, according to a research company called D-Score. We are getting 147 emails a day. People are making over 300 decisions today. We're, we got the doldrums, you call them, but I think we're just overwhelmed. Mm. We're so busy. Mm -hmm. And our busyness is getting in the way of our happiness. Right. So sometimes we're spending our energy where we don't need to be spending our energy. Yeah. So you have three simple ways people can kind of simplify well, life. Exactly. There's three things you got to eliminate. One is called choice. Mm -hmm. Time and access. Let's okay. talk about choice first. It's like I wear the same thing every time I'm on TV and anytime I'm on a stage. Um, how do I get around? I don't know. I follow ways, like the traffic app. You know, I just sends me down a dark alley. I take it. I eat the same thing for breakfast every day. If you can, if you can eliminate choice in your life. By simplifying some of those small decisions, yeah. we should make room for the ones that matter. And there are some very successful people that do that. Successful Obama people. wears the blue and black suit right. every day. He always says that. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg always wears the same hoodie. Mm -hmm. You know, take the decision that you don't that doesn't matter to you. And it's for clothes, you know, that's for me. Some people might say, "No, clothes are a big, big important one." But I say, "Have a peanut butter and banana sandwich for." For breakfast, then, like, choose something that doesn't matter to you so you can focus on the things that count. Okay, and those small things can create a little bit of time. Exactly, that's choice. Okay. The second one is time. There's something called Parkinson's Law, which states that work rises to fill the time available for its completion. Mm -hmm. So move your deadlines up. Do homework on Friday night. It means you have the whole weekend free. It's hard to do it, but anything you have time to do, it means you fill the time. So chores, yes. for example, in your house, so you're doing chores every night. My wife and I, we made a chores day. One day a month where we just do all of our chores. We keep a list on the kitchen. Yeah. And the other 29 days, we don't think about it. Aha. Uh -huh. We reduce the amount of time we have to do it. So you're not kind of tinking around cleaning one corner of the bathroom and then moving to the closet and then trying to make the bed. You exactly. do it all in one. One piece. It means the house could get kind of messy leading up to that, but because sure. we know we have that one big chores blitz coming, it simplifies everything else. So that's More choice, that's like time. It. The third one's access. The average person these days has six access points to themselves. I'm talking about Facebook, I'm talking about Twitter, I'm talking about text messages, people calling you, voicemail. There are so many ways we can contact each other, and that switching between them actually slows us down. Some studies say that we spend 30% of our day bookmarking, prioritizing, and switching between tasks. So if you can reduce the number of access points to mm -hmm. one or two you can control. You know, for me, I have my email address plastered everywhere. Neil at Global Happiness Network, it's in my books, whatever. But you know what? I'm not on any other device or platform. Those things I've got automated so that I can control how much access I have to myself. So Really? Yeah, so what, you know, what is the social media you are using the least? And I would encourage your, your viewers to just delete that one account. Try it out for 14 days. Believe me, those, those people, they won't let you go that easily. Yeah. And if you can do that, what else can you eliminate so that you have less access points to yourself, less switching between? And if you can eliminate choice, time, and access slowly, then you actually make room to be happier and our busyness won't be in the way of our happiness anymore. Okay, it sounds simple. Those access points, I think, is really tricky, particularly in a day and age where we feel like we need to be yeah. connecting all the time yeah. and responding all the time in those text messages and maybe your, the email for you. So how do you control, how do you do your time management that way? Well, like, I partnered with the best-selling author on productivity to research for the happiness equation. We found the two best hours of day to check email are from 9 to 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. and from 4 to 5 p.m. Everyone thinks you're always on, but you create a six-hour email-free window from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the middle of your day. So sometimes it's just about putting it somewhere where you can control so that you create an oasis in the middle of your day. Aha. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. These are words of wisdom and habits that could be hard to break, but that will make a big difference. They're not necessarily easy, but everything incrementally we can do increases the amount of deep work, large brainstorming, and debating you can do with your time. It actually helps you focus on the big things that move the needle. Great advice. Great advice. And there is more on the happiness equation. That is the name of the book. Great to see you again. Thanks, yes, thank you. you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the door is always open.